It will be loud tonight here inside this ballpark. The Puerto Rican fans in huge numbers once again for this first round matchup in Pool D. Israel's only played one game so far, and they're undefeated 1 0. Puerto Rico 1 and 1. Puerto Rico, the home team, and so they take the field here as we get ready to go. Second game of the day in Miami. Starting lineup for Israel, Jack Peterson, who is the biggest hitting star, most established player on this team. He moves into the leadoff spot. He's had great success in his career as a leadoff hitter. He's playing center field for Israel in this tournament. Zach Geloff, good prospect for the A's. Mervis Valencia, Alex Dickerson, Lavarnway, with his experience at catcher. Spencer Horwitz had a huge at bat. Against Nicaragua, Kelly and Menlinger round out the lineup for Israel against the right handed pitcher for Puerto Rico. We saw him just a moment ago on the mound and starting to warm up, Jose De Leon. Well, we got to talk about starting early and often for Puerto Rico, but the same thing goes for Team Israel. They, they want to start early and often, and it starts with Jock Peterson. Got to be careful with Jose De Leon, though. Fastball changeup, cutter, slider. Likes to throw that change up in 1 1 counts. A guy who likes to ride the fastball as well later in counts. This is a guy who has all commands of all his four pitches. I look forward to watching Jose de Leon. And let's take a look at those pitches through Stat Cats in the arsenal. We talk about that sinker and that good change up that we talked about that he has. He can throw it whenever he wants. I know 1 1 counts are the counts he likes to throw them in. But he's got that slider as well, which he demands. He throws a little sweeper off of it and a little bit more of a cutter-like style of a slider. But this is a guy that has all the feels when it comes on that mound. A little bit like Burials, guy who kind of came up as a, as a middle infielder, it felt like, and he's just playing catch with Maldonado. I look forward to watching him start tonight. Our team Maldonado caught the first game for Puerto Rico. Did not catch in last night's loss against Venezuela. Back behind home plate tonight, and here we go. First pitch of the game rides inside to Jock Peterson who takes ball one. They give Jock the platoon advantage. He's one of the better sluggers in the world. Big power numbers last year and he hits a rocket into the shift which is still available in this World Baseball Classic and Jock Peterson is going why don't we play with the 2023 yeah. MLB rules. <laughs> That's pretty good at bat. That's what we call a linea. An absolute liner right up by us. So the overall defense for Puerto Rico Rosario Hernandez and Velasquez getting the start out at right field Rivera Lindor Baez Neptali Soto Maldonado the great defensive force behind the plate catching for De Leon. That Geloff that fastball rides inside ball one. Yeah, we've seen a lot of really good catchers in this tournament. I think Maldonado not one of the better catchers in our game the way he just controls the whole game the way he calls pitches the way he receives the way he oh. blocks, just has a really knack for the game. He, he's you know we talk about the Puerto Rican history of catchers. This is he's going to eventually be at that list as well as one of the, the top guys in the history of catching for Puerto Rico. Defense only he's he's definitely already there Geloff found in front against the breaking ball. So it's one to two and I think Maldonado will be important tonight because as you said De Leon not to say he's not capable but. His game is not overpowering. So mixing and matching, choosing the right spots, good game plan, very important yep. for him. Maldonado does a really good job of feeling his way through the order, especially the first time through. Okay. You know, he'll go with the game plan, but then after that, he'll start adjusting with swings, he'll start adjusting off the scoreboard. You see him pitching to the style of whatever's happening, whatever feel he he has with De Leon and the hitter at the time. Yadier Molina, the manager for Puerto Rico, and Maldonado just on defense, game oh. calling. He's in that he's in that realm with Yadi. Breaking ball got him. So Geloff strikes out swinging. Two down. Oh, that's a really good slider right there. We talk about the different shapes he throws them when this is a little bit more that little cement mixer, but just enough to kind of get him off a little early at times. But he likes to throw that that sweeper he likes to throw that little cutter off of it and then that two seamer or four seamers up in the zone. So two quick outs and now Cubs slugging prospect Matt Murphys stands in yep. goes after the first pitch and fouls that one out of play. Took Israel a while to get their offense going yesterday in their first game they were down late and had to rally against one of the better relievers in this tournament Jonathan Loisica. But they pulled it off. Mervis hit that one hard to center field. 
A lot of room out there. Kike Hernandez for out number three. That's a nine pitch inning for De Leon. So Israel retired. Puerto Rico coming up when we come back. Bottom of the first, Puerto Rico will come up here in their third game of this World Baseball Classic. Francisco Lindor, superstar shortstop, leads off. Kike Hernandez, MJ Melendez, the DH in this game. Rivera, Baez, Eddie Rosario has been swinging the bat well. Nelson Velasquez starts a game for the first time. Young player from the Cubs organization, Soto and Maldonado, the catcher, batting ninth. Facing the lefty for Israel. He's a prospect for the Houston Astros, Colton Gordon. Yeah, the 6 4 out of. St. Petersburg went to college here in Florida at Central Florida. It's a guy who relies heavily on soft contact. Fastball's about 91, 93 with that slider changeup. His fastball, though, since he's 6'4, he's got that long extension. You know, we're going to see 91 to 92, but don't be surprised. These hitters are going to see that pitch and feel that it's a little bit harder. It's got that sneaky, it's got that bite, it's got life. Lindor batting right handed against Gordon. Takes ball one. Always felt like Lindor from the right side earlier and often he was he was kind of looking to to be a hitter right try to go the other way see some pitches but if he kind of times you up he'll go to work and he'll pull some baseballs pull that one big hop right to third fielded there by Geloff throws out Lindor so one away the full defense for Israel Horwitz Peterson and Alex Dickerson in the outfield Medlinger I said Geloff Medlinger's at third Geloff's over at second Geloff as a prospect is a third baseman in this tournament he's mostly playing second Kelly at short Mervis at first Ryan LaVarnway the veteran catcher one of the true leaders of this team behind the plate. Earlier talking and seeing what was happening with Lindor and the communication factor, how important it is for these Puerto Rican hitters to have communication at all times. And most, a lot of these guys haven't seen Cohen pitch, so communication is going to be a factor, especially the first couple of innings. Our guys are trying to get as, as much as they can to go up there and battle against them. Kike Hernandez to center field. Who's going to take it Dickerson and Jock Peterson and finally Jock oh. comes in and catches it. Uh, who wants it. Well, you got to love him. It's probably telling him you know it took a bad hop up, up there. Yeah. Big jet right. stream blew through. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> got to love it. One outside to MJ Melendez. You highlighted him right off the top. He's been swinging the bat very well the first two games. Young player for the Kansas City Royals. Got a lot of power. Outside. Now they're expecting a lot out of him in Kansas City. This is a guy who worked tremendously with his lower half this offseason. You know, at times he, he kind of spins out of the baseball. Kind of looks like a leadoff when he's making contact, but you know, really wanted to work on his leg kick, really wanted to stay put. Especially his backside, kind of anchoring his backside as much as possible, gives him the ability to be flatter and have a lot more path to the baseball. He's ahead 3 0, and he takes ball four. Some close pitches there, but called balls. Ron Culpa is our home plate umpire. He's one of those umpires who likes to bark it out, so sometimes we don't even have to tell you. He'll tell you. Oh, Ron, Ron will tell you. <laughs> I've had a nice share of beautiful conversations with him. Pacero <laughs> and Chris Guccione and Tim Meyer, the other three umpires out on the bases. He's been great. He's 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 a pro of all pros. And that's where these games have a mix of big league umpires and umpires from around the world. Ball one to Emmanuel Rivera. Overall, I, I think the umpiring's been excellent. We've hardly had any reviews no they've been they've been outstanding they've made adjustments they, they've gathered together made the right calls first base runner of the game 
And now Rivera swings through the fastball. And maybe that's an example of what you were talking about. The radar gun might not tell the full story about the effectiveness of Colton Gordon's fastball. Yeah, he's got good carry. See why Rivera is in that lineup heading, heading fourth. It's a guy who had a 120 plus OPS during the 2022 season against left handers. He feels good against left handers. Got to be careful with this 1 1. Hit hard, base hit into left field. Melendez stops at second. Rivera, another hit for him. And I try to go and little baby cutter slider. Got too much of that plate. I just like how behind the baseball he stays. Very composed, very quiet. Not much movement. As you can see, his head, it, it rarely moves. It just stays right on target, right? Look how inside he stays on that pitch. He'll collect the base hit. Why not? We talked about early and often. Early and often is happening right now. It would be a, I think it would be a big boost for Puerto Rico to grab a lead. Especially in, in, in first inning with two outs, it's demoralizing on a team, or I, I would say an underdog, when they get those base hits. They, they feel like, I know it's just one run, but they feel like two or three runs. They just haven't, as a team, hit for a bunch of power. They have had a good amount of success in these kind of at bats as a team in their first two games. Avi Baez outside. takes it outside for ball one. To me, if Puerto Rico wants to realize its championship aspirations, they're going to need to get a lot from this hitter. Especially in situations like this. He's not had great at bats in the first couple games. That one is ripped and fair. Into the corner, and that will score at least one. Rivera rounding third, the relay home, and not in time. A two run double for Javi Baez. Early and often, Javi. Early and often, Javi. Team Rubio. He likes it. Vargas likes it. Maldonado likes it. He's on second base, and he's saying, Estamos aquí. We are here. We're ready to roll. It was a very gutsy play, as we can see right there with that slider. Not much happened with it. Oh, he was digging it all the way. <laughs> Rooting for it to stay fair. Absolutely. And it just did. Rivera, the third base, third base coach, was putting the stop on him. And he just went completely over that. He was running with his head down, but he felt like he could make it. Well, the instincts were there for a baseball player and a baseball runner. You're going to run through the stop sign. You better get oh, there. And he did. So that turned out to be a good decision. The two out walk started it all. Two outs, nobody on. Walk, base hit, and then the double by Baez. So much needed for Puerto Rico, but much needed for Javi. Yeah, easily his best at bat so far. Puerto Rico, 11 for 21 as a team with runners in scoring position in two plus games. Pretty good, eh? Wow. Inside for a ball. Eddie Rosario hit the only home run for Puerto Rico so far in last night's game and it was extra impressive because he did it against a guy who otherwise was dominating everybody. Pablo Lopez. Oh. Baez runs the throw and he oh. is safe. He slid around the tag. Who's going swimming? Javi was with that swim move. Very gutsy with two outs. Can't make the third out of third base. He needed to know he was going to be there 100%. Whoops! <laughs> wow. El Mago, the magician. That was. He's the best tagger in the world, and now I just found out he's the best avoider of tags in the world. <laughs> Runner at third, two down. Rosario to center field. Jock Peterson still going back over his head off the bottom of the wall. Baez is in, and it's 3 nothing. Early and often, 
and they early and often, they've answered the bell. Another hit with runners in scoring position. And Rosario's that guy, the momentum swinger guy, right? Where things aren't looking so good, Rosario's there. When he needs to continue the rally, Rosario is there. Big game, Rosario is there. Well, this looks like the team that came to life in the late innings last night. And we were wondering that because for a while it was ugly. And they did a great job of coming from behind. Now the comeback fell short, but it does almost feel like that confidence at the plate has carried over into this game. Well, it showed identity. I think that's just as important as tying up a ball oh. game or in a, in a tournament like this, even winning a ball game. It shows really who you are and what you're made of. You know, these guys have been here before. Let's not get a fool here. 2017, they were runner ups. They've been here before, they, they know what it takes. This is well off the inside, so it's two and one. Colton Gordon really struggling here after getting the first two outs fairly quickly. Velasquez. Young player for the Cubs. He's got some tools. And foul tips that one straight back. Well, you mentioned the experience from. 2017 Javi Baez a little repeat. Oh, he did it in the last World Baseball Classic. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> He's been doing it for a long time though. That is amazing. And he does. He's just a he is a special athlete. He does things that most players can't do. And sometimes they're a little crazy. But I think why is Javi Baez so beloved around the world? Just because of that, right by there. Baseball fans everywhere. It is that. That is the reason why. In contrast, to those numbers we're talking about the clutch hitting for Puerto Rico. The Dominican Republic has really struggled in those at bats. Now they had a couple home runs today. They've slugged some. I don't think anybody's really overly concerned. But it is a big difference through the early games. Of this tournament. Still two and two. Boy, it just feels like they're on everything. Well, he was really upset last night during the game. He was yeah. unhappy with the way his at bats were going. Not tonight. Still just the first inning. High in the air and foul. Look out below. Twenty five pitches already for young Colton Gordon who's a Florida native grew up on the other side of the state in St. Pete pitched in college at Central Florida. Drafted in twenty twenty one so he's not been a pro for very long. Trying to find his way through this first inning. Another 2-2. Two -two. Mm, wow. So Ron Culp was not helping him out. That's a couple he of pitches. I, I know why he did. Take a look here on this slider. Little backdoor slider. I notice Ron wasn't quite as loud when he said ball on that one. I don't think the conviction yeah. was behind that call. Good at bat here though for Nelson Velasquez. Takes another close one and draws the walk. And it just seems like they're on everything right now. Spitting on the on the slider, being aggressive with the fastball. Took a couple hitters. And Kinsler, who has never managed before this tournament, of course, he's played in so many big games in World Series games, in World Baseball Classic games. And he's got a really experienced coaching staff, but he is the manager for Israel, and he's got a dilemma here in the very first inning. His young pitcher already up to 27 pitches thrown. And 
not out of the inning yet. Neftali Soto, right handed hitter. Fastball for strike one. That's a good fastball right there to a guy in Soto who, who likes to handle the fastball. I remember playing with him in the Cincinnati Reds days. Always was a good fastball hitter. Loves to use the gaps, gap to gap, lets the ball travel. A little bit low. Now, this is a big pitch right here, 1 1. I, I, I think if you're Gordon right now, you want to win this at bat. You, you want to finish this at bat right now with 30 pitches. Now one hit high and deep to left field. Horwitz all the way back in front of the wall to make the catch. And at long last, the inning is over. But what a start for Puerto Rico in this game tonight. The quick inning in the top of the first. The inimitable Javi Baez doing everything out there. Three nothing. Well, Colton Gordon, the starter for Israel, retired the first two hitters. After that, it was not easy. Eight hitters come to the plate, three hits, two walks, three runs. Javi Baez diving all over the place. Rosario with another big hit. So here we go to inning number two. Israel's got a lot of work to do. They came from behind yesterday, but this is a different problem. Well, very important for De Leon to put a zero up and a quick one, too. Kind of similar to what he did in the first. Did not get the call there. It's a small strike zone. Yep. Colton Gordon found that out in the bottom of the first inning. So it's 2 0 oh to Danny Valencia. Been around the big leagues for a long time. Oh. Right at the knees for a called strike. Came up as a pinch hitter in the first game. He's the DH here in game two for Israel. Had a good cut there. I don't know if he would be playing tonight if Garrett Stubbs were fully healthy. Garrett Stubbs had the big hit of the game. Yeah. The the young backup catcher for the Phillies, who's just a good all-around athlete, good player. But he's got a little knee soreness, so he's not in the starting lineup. We don't know if he could be available off the bench tonight. Outside. Full count three and two. It's a loss for Israel because he did. He had the he had the great at bat that ended up winning the game. Especially early in, in the game here, the three-nothing lead. They'll challenge him. The Leon will challenge him. He got him to chase. That was ball four, but Valencia couldn't lay off. That's a situation understanding the scoreboard, knowing a fastball would be coming with a three-nothing. He's gonna challenge him. Obviously, it was out of the zone right there, but yeah, he knows it. Maybe an example of the phenomenon. You and I were talking about Valencia had to be thinking, okay, fastball's coming, and you get the pitch that you're looking for, but it's not in the best location. But because it's the it's the right pitch, you have a hard time laying off. Absolutely. I mean, we've all been there. Alex Dickerson, who had some nice swings against Nicaragua yesterday. Got a lot of power. He's ahead two and zero. Oh. The a little too quick right now. See Maldonado kind of raising his mask. Giving him that stare. Dickerson might have helped him out. Two and one. Alex Dickerson, who's still looking for a big league organization, came up with the Padres, San Diego kid. Two and two. Fastball got right by him. Yeah, it's got some good life on it right now. A lot of these hitters are having a tough time. Getting on top of it, and it's all four seams right now. Way outside. I think with Maldonado, it's, it's kind of that feel of hey, let's not fool around here. Especially if you want to preserve your bullpen as much as possible. Two is strike three call. So he got the pitcher friendly call that time. Two down. Uh, that's a little bit too close to take, in my opinion. 
Nice little four seamer with a little ride. Maldonado did a good job framing that. Clearly a ball. But Again, I agree with you. you that's Maldonado. That with, you take that with two strikes, you're in danger. Yeah. Even Maldonado taking a look. Kind of feeling the energy, feeling the vibe. What's Ryan LeVarnway looking for? Let's go with a breaking ball. It's <laughs> not. He tries to notice everything. Look at him just staring at him, trying to, trying to feel what we like to say, like the salsa, a salsa, the sauce. What type of sauce he's got right now, right? Staring at him. Is he peeking at me? He's got the pop up sauce. Behind shortstop for round number three, De Leon. A little issue with his command, but he gets through it with a couple of strikeouts. Midway through two, three nothing, Puerto Rico. Bottom of the second here in Miami after a three run first inning for Puerto Rico. And you noticed a little something in that first inning. Yeah, you know, I just felt like, especially with runners on base, that's where Puerto Rico did all their damage. But I feel like he's tipping, especially with the left side. That's his fastball. The glove is a little bit tighter to his face. And with the breaking ball, you can see a little bit of a wiggle room. There's a little bit more space. And hitters, they'll devour that. I mean, they can see everything. They'll see every little inch, and they if they can get an advantage on anything like that. Oh, they'll exploit it right away. It's, it's with runners on, though. I, I always felt like runners on. You know, these Puerto Rican hitters—they were taking every every breaking ball. They were swinging at the right pitches. They were swinging at the right fastball. Just got to get people on. Ninth place hitter Maldonado ahead 2-0. And oh! Gordon's got to challenge him. A fastball right on the That's inside. That's a good fastball right there. Maldonado does have power. Did not have a great year hitting, but was so trusted he was the guy in the playoffs. He was going to catch basically every inning through the end of the World Series and ultimately helped lead that brilliant Astros pitching staff to a world championship. Problem with Maldonado, he's very frisky. Right? He's a guy that oh he's not known for his hitting, and all of a sudden it could be for nothing. Yep. Right? He 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 as much as we can talk about his catch, he's a guy that he'll look, he'll hunt for a window, he'll hunt for a pitch, and next thing you know, it's it's hit 420 feet. You got to be careful with him, though. I think it's a great formula actually for a catcher. Okay, lock down the defensive side. Be a guy the pitchers love to throw to. Forget about the batting average. Just have a little power. Do some damage sometimes. And I think as his career progresses, he's. He's gotten a lot better, a little bit more consistent to knowing what he can do. Big pitch here for Gordon. 3 2. Maldonado liner, base hit, left center field. Hit that hard, and even without great speed, no. I don't think he's going to try. He <laughs> took a big turn, and he went back. <laughs> That's what we talked about Maldonado getting on top of a fa high fastball. And I would like to say he, he's one of those frisky hitters, but if he gets a pitch he likes and he's sitting on one pitch, oh, get ready. Let the flow go, baby. Swag for days. And it's too bad for Colton Gordon. I'm sure he was really looking forward to this, but it does appear as if his start is going to be finished. Ian Kinsler, the manager, coming out to make the pitching change. So three runs of the first, a base runner to start the second. The top of the order coming up. We'll be back right after this. Puerto Rico already leading this game 3 nothing here tonight. Second game of the day in Miami in Pool D, the World Baseball Classic. And they've knocked the starter out, Colton Gordon. So Brandon Gold takes over, Triple A pitcher last year for the Colorado Rockies. Out of Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jacket, the ACC. Brandon Gold, though, spent the last two seasons at Triple A in Albuquerque, as you mentioned, with a 6.76 ERA. But, but to say the least, a very hitter-friendly league, hitter-friendly stadium. Yes, sometimes 
you just have to throw those pitching numbers out in that league and especially in that ballpark you pitch your home games in Albuquerque as just that could be the most hitter friendly of all. Oh my goodness. So Gold will take over and a real challenge because right away he has to face the top of the order Lindor. Kike Hernandez Melendez Maldonado already at first. Not to try to do too much right here unless he gets a pitch up in the zone. And he's so, you know, he does so many things well, but he's so underrated on, on you know, always picking his spots and, and always trying to get the good pitch to hit. Inside. That one misses inside. May have bought himself another change up here, 2 1. He took that fastball right there. Now it's three and one. You know, truly one of the great shortstops in the world. Four time All Star, a couple of Gold Glove Awards, Silver Slugger Awards. This will be his ninth year coming up. And we talk about those. Accolades, but what he does in the clubhouse is even more important. Same guy every day. The attitude of a winner, that's for sure. Not close, and Israel is in trouble tonight with their pitching. So up comes Kike Hernandez. Slide out his first time up. And you can just feel the change in confidence for this lineup for Puerto Rico. No question about it. I know it's three nothing right now in the bottom of the second, but it just feels like it's six nothing. That's what happens when you're what we talked about early and often. You get on top of a team like that and all of a sudden you kind of put them away right. Hey this is where this is where your stop this is where you'll make your stop. Oh. Strike fastball. You got to be really careful with Kike here he's, a, he's hunting fastballs at all times and wanting to pull. Got to make sure if you get that fastball. It's located well. In the dirt, we blocked by LaBarnway. I, I maybe, uh, look, this is the third day in a row for Puerto Rico getting to play. It's the time of year where the, especially the established big leaguers in spring training, they might play a day, take a day or two off, play again. And who knows, maybe just a third day in a row getting more into the baseball routine, and you see a change at the plate. Normal routine here, and Endes out in front. It's one to two. Well, that's a good changeup right there. But yeah, going back on these hitters, you know, it takes takes weeks to adjust on inches, right? And I think that's why you have spring training. That's why spring training is a little longer than what people may think. It's because it takes that much longer. You got to see a lot of pitches. You got to see over 150 pitches in spring training. A lot of these guys are seeing somewhere right now into the the 40s and 50 pitch mark. They still need another 100 pitches for them to feel like they're locked in. And even then, in April, you're still not locked in. You still need that game, big league game kind of timing of a bigger stadium, a bigger crowd. Everybody's playing nine innings now. It takes time. No question about it now in tournaments like this, you have to wrap up everything as quickly as possible. That one is lined hard into left field. Kike Hernandez with a hit. And the ball gets through all the way to the wall. Maldonado scores. Lindor flying around third. And he will score two. Five to nothing.
Rich couldn't cut it off, and that meant Lindor was off to the races. Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Try to throw that that changeup all over again. And Kike was ready. He was all over it. Didn't miss it. Obviously, we see the misplay there. But Lindor was running all the way. He was running hard like he always does. We see Maldonado right there. And we see Lindor right behind him. Still nobody out. Two runs in in this inning. Melendez oh. takes strike one. I like the look of this young hitter. I think oh. he's, he's finding his rhythm here. Got to pick and choose. Fastball changeup. He's got a good changeup, especially for the left-handers. High fly ball left field. Horwitz comes in. One away. So much needed first out for Israel. They're excited, aren't they? I, the, the amazing part about last night's game is it was nine to one Venezuela nine to one and Puerto Rico would get a base runner a walk and this place <laughs> went crazy I, I, it just it doesn't take anything what happens when you've been waiting for six years for, <laughs> your, for your country to it's play true. here at Lone Depot Park it's true Rivera inside, inside ball one. Talk about gold and hasn't really shown a breaking ball. It's just a bit, a bit, a big mix of fastballs and changeup, which for right-handers don't really want to want to be careful with those changeups. Go run, run right into your barrel. Oh! For Rivera, you got to think up in the zone right now. I mean, velocity's not going to beat you. He's 89, 90 miles an hour. Got to think up, up, up. Anything low, you just let it go. Said good at bats this week. That one hit into right center field. It's going to split the gap and roll all the way to the wall. Hernandez scores. Rivera makes the turn, heading for third. In there with a triple. Make it one for one. Make it two for two. Talk about Puerto Rico with runners in scoring position. My goodness, they're putting on a clinic right now. Incredible. And it's been just an onslaught. Law fields, left center, down the line, right center. Taking their walk, swinging at the right pitches. Trying to sneak a two seamer right there in on his hands. He was ready for it. Boy, that's how you hit him. You're hitting that ball inside the other way. You're connected and you're in really good shape. Now the infield comes in for Israel. Well, those numbers you're talking about. Four for six tonight. Swing, ground ball. Not hit hard. Backhanded at second and the throw over to first by Geloff in time with Rivera holding at third. So not that time. Javi Baez went after the very first pitch. It's out number two. That's a gift. It can't be a comfortable feeling to see Javi Baez in the batter's box be playing in. At all. Even with that one, four for seven as a team with runners in scoring position, 14 for 27. Wow. In this World Baseball Classic. Impressive. That is a wow. Well, we talked about the history of Puerto Rico and their ability in the first rounds to score a lot of runs. Averaging 6.6 .6 runs, the history of the World Baseball Classic. That's been Puerto Rico in the first round. They'll ambush you and they'll score a lot of runs. So far, they've hit their mark. Strike one to Eddie Rosario. Blasted a double off the bottom of the center field wall. It's a big ballpark. And he hit it a long way his first time up. Second inning, second at bat. For the sixth place hitter for Puerto Rico, leading six to nothing. <laughs> Healthy hack. He saw that one big, even though it came high and tight. A little bit surprised with the pitch calling right there, especially in that first inning. A double he hit off that fastball. 
A healthy hack may have bought him another change, a, a change up right here. We'll see. 0-2. Oh, oh. Ryan right, tight again. Went even higher. Wake up. Got to slow him down. He did, and the rollover is going to kick foul. So just a foul ball. Very pro Puerto Rican crowd here for this game. Another roller on the first base side again foul. Can you imagine tomorrow Puerto Rico will be off. That's Tuesday Wednesday night. And as long as things hold true to form what likely will be a game that will decide who moves on to the quarterfinals. Yep. Puerto Rico against the Dominican Republic. What the scene inside this park is going to be like? Oh. Mm, two and two. Are you, he, I, I think he, you know, in this situation, this at bat, just watching how he's developing right now, he's, he's flirting with throwing too many changes. At some point, Rosario likes to make adjustments and sit on pitches. Got to be careful if he's sitting on changeup again. They're trying to go in on him right here. Yep. He did. Rosario turned on it, hit it foul. Now he sped him up right now. Who two could be that pitch right now after speeding him up with another changeup? But Rosario knows the game plan, right? He, he's also got a feel, and he's taking his time right now and thinking this changeup's got to be very well executed. We're going to try to freeze him down and away. Two two. Oh. They did exactly that. He got the low strike. And the inning is over. But two more runs for Puerto Rico. And we'll go to the third. It's six to nothing. All right, welcome back here. Top of the third, Puerto Rico with a six nothing lead over Israel. And we are honored to have here in the booth the global ambassador for the World <laughs> Baseball Classic Thank recording you. superstar, Daddy Yankee. How you welcome. Doing, I'm good. Very good. My man. Legend. Oh, Absolute yeah. legend right here. Good to see you again. You got to be thrilled with the way this game is going, huh? Oh, of course. I'm enjoying the games. Yeah, for sure. But we're good having a great game. No, we've seen you talk to a lot of the guys here in Puerto Rico, but for the Puerto Rican team. But who's, who's the guy that you, you kind of lean on and, and have your, your normal, regular talks with? Uh, happy. I got to say, Happy Bias. That's my, my, my friend. And I know we spend time in Ireland together most of the time. Oh. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about Santurce and, and and the team Cangrejeros. Santurce, that's the historical local team in Puerto Rico. Um, uh, the biggest team um, in our history, and I'm co-owner of that baseball team. And that's what I'm here, supporting yeah, supporting the guys and supporting um, the sport. There's, there's you and Javi right there yesterday, talking, <laughs> hanging out. Yeah. Oh, uh, look at that. Hey, amazing, man. We love Howie, man. We got my respect for him. He's the man. What do you got on the hair? Boom. Howie. All the guys. Team Rubio. Uh, Team Rubio, my man. It's, it's fun. We bring, we bring the, the passion and that aggressiveness, you know, in a cool way. Um, oh! And we're, you know, it's fun to watch the, the national team, man. Puerto Rico is bringing up where it's that refreshing in the sport. Have you always been a baseball fan? I grew up playing baseball. I grew up, yes. That's, uh, that's why I'm involved with the sport. And that's why I, I'm co-owner of the Cangrejeros, uh, my team in Puerto Rico. And I love the game. I love the game, and, and that's part of my life. Before I, I became a, a, an artist, this is my first passion right here. Now, you're co-owner of that team. Does that mean you help decide who you're going to sign, who you want to bring in as players? Yeah, for sure. That would be the fun part about being an owner, right? <laughs> that's the fun, yeah, that's the fun part. And besides that, um, we're working to develop local uh, talent oh. in Ireland. You know, we talk about the game of baseball and how difficult it is, the grind that, that it takes, obviously, you know, seven, eight months out of the year. 
But you just finished your La Ultima Vuelta. Yeah. And I know that's got to be a grind on your body and you know, everywhere with the buses and the flying. How was that for you and how much did you have doing that tour? I mean, uh, it was six months in a row, not stop. Um, right now, I'm, I'm under therapy because I remember <laughs> I had an accident. I had an accident on the tour, and that's the reason that uh, I got to postpone one of the shows, and I'm closing the tour in Puerto Rico uh, at the end of the year, probably. All right, I got to ask you a question in Spanish. I know there's two hours, but ¿qué se siente para la gente tuya en, en Puerto Rico? Uh, Verte aquí. Increíble, increíble, hermano. Yo, yo me divierto tanto como fanaticada con mi gente. Eh, me siento que estoy en, en Puerto Rico ahora mismo. Eh, la audiencia de Puerto Rico somos alegres, apasionados, nos gusta apoyar a nuestro equipo. Y es lo bonito que, que, que tenemos nosotros los boricuas, nuestra audiencia, que en las buenas y en las malas estamos con nuestra gente. Oh, you know, he, he, a little translation right there. He just feels like he's at home. And he loves his people. He loves the fact that all his people here are supporting the World Baseball Classic and, and Team Puerto Rico. But oh, his heart is, is always in that island. Yeah, for sure. And we support our team in a... And the bad, and the goods, and the bads, and you can feel the energy of the Puerto Rican audience. We're loud, and we love the game. Uh, yes, yes, you are. And how about this event? Because you're the you're the global ambassador for the World Baseball Classic. You love this event? Oh wow, amazing! And, and it's a great honor. Um, I travel the world. I travel Israel, which is a beautiful country as well, and Asia, Europe, um, here, and Latin America, U.S. So I know the world. It's beautiful too bring everybody together in one sport and that's what the music uh, do as well. Now we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves but Wednesday night Dominican Republic <laughs> Puerto Rico you looking forward to that one. Of, of course you, you'll see me there <laughs> you know oh. that's the, the, the you know the, the brother rivalry you know and, and we had that amazing rivalry but it's like when you man when you're competing with your brother you want to beat your brother but it's all good. It's, it's family. You talk about competing with your brothers and that friendly bet you have with David Ortiz, Big Poppy. <laughs> and, and if you can elaborate on that with Mofongo, you got to cook for him. If Dominican <laughs> wins, or how, how does it work? I mean, I don't know how it's gonna work, but I mean, he gotta he gotta do a mangu for me. Probably I'll do a Mofongo <laughs> for him. I don't know how he's gonna do. But how do you like your mangu? Ah, uh, mango, I love it. How do you like it? I mean, uh, este, por la mañana, in the morning, at yeah. breakfast, is the best. La bandera, they call it in DR, beautiful. The uh, bollita. Yeah, Cebollita, for sure. All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> this was just a couple days ago. Looking good with the Baez sunglasses, the jersey. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, ball one, though. Ball one, ball one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you didn't bounce it. We're good. We're good, We're good right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? That was a ball. I mean, Javi did a great job on that one. <laughs> He's your buddy. He took care of you. Yeah. Strike three, swing. Yeah, that's it. All right, we're back here in Miami, minus our new best pal, Daddy Yankee. I, you know, I, I, I should have really asked him, because I mean, am I supposed to call him Daddy? Daddy Yankee. I mean, we oh. talk about the legend of all legends. I remember watching his the first time of the Regotonero at his finest with Gasolina, and that had the world shook completely. <laughs> I remember, I just enjoyed it so much. I. First pitch or uh, second pitch swing for Nelson Velasquez to right field. Alex Dickerson for out number one. Bottom of the third, six nothing. Puerto Rico you know, with the lead. Talk about Daddy Yankee. He, he transformed the culture. You know, we talk about culture nowadays. He transformed the culture of, of Latin music, reggaeton. I mean, a lot of people owe him a, a huge debt of, of, of thank yous for, for everything he has done for. For the Latin community and music. It's true. He is a worldwide star. He told us six month tour. Yeah. Six months. He gets after it. No question about it. He's involved with baseball, loves baseball, played baseball. Just class. Co owner of that. Historic team helping to develop young talent too, which is so important in a place that has produced so many great players for our sport, the sport that we love. That's right. So anyway, we appreciate him coming by and chatting with us. Oh. Dream come true, I'll tell you that on my end. He's your guy. Strike three call. 
remember uh, in all the songs. Despacito. Oh, that was a jam in 2017. That's big. Hey, I can I can teach you the lyrics now. I might know a few of those. <laughs> now, you look at me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Gotta love it. Yeah, I'm probably not, you know, like as high on the list of Daddy Yankee fans maybe as you are, but <laughs> I can appreciate talent. You guys got a lot of talent. It yeah, does. Strike one to Martin Maldonado. Machete. Yeah, this is no knock against Christian Vasquez. Yeah, because well, he's the catcher's not out there making the pitches. But things just are calm for Puerto Rico for any team. When Martin Maldonado is behind the plate, it's just under control. I guarantee you this. And no knock on a mountain out of a Christian Vasquez can catch for 29 big league teams. So he, he is that good. But when you talk about Maldonado and you know what he brings to the table and his pedigree and you know, both guys have are world champs both guys to their own rights had incredible careers. And he's up on the at the plate or where he when he's catching I mean it's just a, the aura. You may say. Pop that one up back in our direction. Yeah, hard to get a, that. Hard to get a foul ball. You know, yeah, up here. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think they'll throw him another change up after that two-one change. Ooh. Very healthy hack. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm not as bilingual as you two are. But as you asked him that question in Spanish and he was answering you, I, I knew exactly what he was saying. I did. Oh, nice. Just because it's just easy to hear the passion for the yep. passion of these Puerto Rican fans. Well, I had to. I mean, he's. Pop up behind first. And that will end the inning. That's our guy right there, huh? Little G spot. On to the fourth. Daddy Yankees partying tonight. Six nothing, Puerto Rico. Jose De Leon, the starter tonight for Puerto Rico, throwing the ball very well. Uh, it's been fantastic, and it started with that fastball, that four seam fastball. He's been throwing it with ease. A good change of off of that, especially to the left handers, but. Just as, it all starts with the fastball. When you when you got con, when you got control with the fastball, you can throw your breaking balls whenever you want. And it's, he's been fantastic and very very sharp. Look at the strikeouts he's had today. Obviously with the four seam that change up in that slider, but you know he's just in a groove. He's got rhythm early and often. You can just tell he had it going. The best at bat for Israel was the guy who's at the plate now, Jack Peterson, led off the game with a liner into the shift that was caught. But they have not yet had a base runner. Upside. Wouldn't be surprised to repeat that change up again. Likes throwing him 1-1. One, one. Especially to a guy like this and Jock Peterson. You don't really want to give him any oh. hard hit ball again, but again the defense right there. So Jock's made solid contact twice yep. and has nothing to show for it. That's a little rollover. Boom, a little harder of a change of at 80, 45 miles an hour right there. On the barrel, right at somebody. You can see that change up right there, 1 1. It's a good one. He's got good bite on it, he's got good turn on it. Yeah, he knows it. Unhappy with the result. Pitch swing. Zach Geloff to center field. Kike. Two down. Stress free. Yeah, and uh, the, look, we already know Puerto Rico has tomorrow off, so they get the reset with the the bullpen, the usage, the, the pitching staff as a whole gets to take the day off. But it still would be beneficial if De Leon could pitch deeper into this game. Kind of set the stage for a huge game against the Dominican Republic. Absolutely. 
Matt Murphis right through a first pitch fastball. You know the one thing I I would say with an off day and you know you've played so well your hitting is hot right now everything's going their way with runners in scoring position sometimes when you put a pause to that 24 hours it can kind of freeze you a little bit right it, it can take 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 a little bit of a longer time so we'll see how they respond there's a lot of pro guys I know, you know although it's an off day they're, they're going to go out there and practice they're going to go do their thing sometimes an off day I hated off days when I was I was going well right and when I was going bad oh my goodness I was counting down the, the hours for my <laughs> off day but a moment like this for Puerto Rico in a short term tournament those off days can can be a little dicey. Oh, look at him. Walking back, striding back. He's feeling himself a little Marcus Stroman. Why not? Beautiful night in Miami, which is such a great host for the World Baseball Classic, Israel. And Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico's just look great in this game. Their fans always look great, no matter how the team's playing. Rubio. Yeah, it's been great. It's been fantastic. The fans are going absolutely nuts. What a treat. Uh, when you talk about six years waiting for moments like this, it just feels like a drought. Finally, is here. Leadoff hitter Francisco Lindor against Gold, who is still in the game for Israel on the mound. A yeah, long wait after coming up just short in 2017. The last two. World Baseball Classics Puerto Rico the runner up in both. Gold is not afraid to pitch inside. He's come in on a bunch of these no, hitters. I don't necessarily think it's on purpose. I think he's just kind of getting kind of getting around the baseball a little bit a little too quick. Got away with one there against yeah, the did. door. That's what we talk about. You know, hitters are still in spring training, but you get that 2 0 pitch in July, don't, you don't miss them. Smoke to right field. Dickerson actually did a nice job to pick it after a bounce, but that's a base hit for Lindor. What a, what a hitter, man. Been a lot of loud contact tonight. Tons of it. Let's take a look. Start off with Baez, then we go to Maldonado, then Rivera. And we've had everybody 100 plus miles an hour. Anytime you're hitting the ball like that and it's coming off your bat at an exit velocity with those high rates, good things are going to happen. Seven of those. The last one was 109 by Mr. Lindor. Guy who's not scared of hitting some loud lenius, Pique Hernandez. He's already got one in the book. He does. Pickoff play. Lindor gets back. The situation earlier in the at bat against Gold. He really sat on that changeup. See if he flips the book on him. And if Kike can make the adjustment. Looks like they're going in on him hard. They went in and down. The ball off the bat of Lindor. 105. 105. 105. Eh. <laughs> Tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> Over 100 is, is a rocket. That counts as hard hit. Yes. And then some. There is a point at which, because they have, I mean, look, we have this data now for the last many years about exit velocity and how that translates into higher batting average. And the harder, you, no surprise, the harder you hit the ball, the higher your expected batting average is. There is a point where you start to lose. You, you, you've hit it so hard already, you don't get. It kind of plateaus off, and that might happen around 110 miles an hour, right around there, where you're already up over 800, 850 expected batting average once you hit it that hard. Must be nice. 
Oh, you you had some rockets in your day. <laughs> I saw a lot of them. It's just amazing how these guys right now, where back then it was a little bit more of that old school mentality. All these all these hitters now, technology is kind of catching up in the offensive category. We're pitching had the technology for three or four years, and now all of a sudden these hitters are, are finding ways with drive line or doing weighted bats and new machines, new softer balls. You know, now I remember I used to hit off the machine and I was using real baseballs. Well, that would crush my hands. At a certain point, you had to kind of stop. Now they have these machines with softer balls. You, know, you can get jammed or you, or, or you know you can hit a ball off the end of the bat. It's not going to hurt your hands as much. You can work on your mechanics. You can work on driving baseballs. Work on velocity speed. That's a pop up for Kike Hernandez out number one. It's really a treat. I think it's definitely true that the technology the slow motion cameras all yes. the ways to measure stuff initially really favored pitchers really helped pitchers absolutely get better faster build velocity faster and I do think you're right hitters are learning how to use that tech to enhance their games maybe catch up a little bit well they sure have ca caught up so now MJ Melendez and it's still difficult I mean yeah. you'll never catch up and I feel like no matter what you can take two steps forward and, and pitchers are, are are sprinting by the time you're taking two steps. So but that that's coming from a biased hitter. I'm always taking care of my my hitters right. But it always feels like the pitchers always have an advantage. Doesn't matter you know remember guys were throwing up in the zone. Well it took a couple years for hitters to kind of adjust to that. Well now it's up in the zone with the sweeper or the sliders or the changes. Now they're not going north and south. Now they're going east and west. So it's always an adjustment period and it takes a little bit of time and the good ones the good hitters tend to adjust quicker than I would say the average major leaguer. Never been a harder time to hit than right now. Absolutely. In the history of the game we still have great hitters. By the way our research staff got to work right away in the Statcast era now your career kind of bridged the pre Statcast era and the Statcast era but in the Statcast era your hardest hit ball was 112 miles an hour a home run you hit with Cleveland. Oh, that one got a piece of the catcher and Ouch. Cole was checking on him. You talk about these you know we talk about technology with the hitters and the pitchers but about the technology on Lamar Way's mask it's got those shock absorbers which nowadays we see these foul balls getting hit catchers faces and you know, it can jar you a little bit. Technology has taken a, another step into the catching department, the equipment department for catchers. 112. Did oh, you think you hit, you hit one harder than that sometime? That's what the data says. You know, says. this is the problem. All right, this is the problem. You you, you hit a home run, and if somebody asks you, did you get all of it? You always say you never got all of it. There's you know, more there's in there. There's always more. <laughs> so, you know, I, I also came up in the in the dinosaur era, so they didn't have stat cast, so. You know, a little bit of an older feel to it. Maybe I'm your sure hardest hit ball happened back then. That's what I'm saying during yeah. the dinosaur era. So for me, it's a little different. Probably hit right. one 120. Maybe. A couple of them. Why not? <laughs> you know, it's like going fishing. The fish story always gets the fish gets bigger and bigger as as we say the story. Lindor runs, swung on and missed, throw, and he doesn't even slide. Then the ball gets through. Lindor is going to go all the way to third, and finally. Stops there. Even then, he was thinking about breaking for the plate. That's a stolen base right there off the pitcher. Changeup took forever to get to home plate. George just read that off. What an athlete. I mean, being able to stop on a dime like that as he was trying to go head first slide. Stopping and going just tells you the ability of of a runner that he is. But the strikeout, so now two down. It'll be up to Rivera to come through. Eight. Takes off the inside. That's Another pitch in. One twelve. Yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty good. It's legit. It's legit. 
I'll take it. You know, I'll take it. The problem for the young players today is you can say, hey, my hardest hit ball came before they measured that kind of stuff. <laughs> players today, every single thing gets measured. Absolutely. That that time is over. Well, it helped me in my career. You know, using Statcast, using Fangraphs, Eno Series is a huge part of my adjustment period in my career in 2016 to 2017 where you know, I fixed a lot of my launch angles. I fixed a lot of my exit velocities. You know, a great baseball writer who's, yes. who was kind of on the cusp of looking in into open. that data, figuring out how players could use it. I remember having vivid talks with him about how can I get better. And Rivera, a liner to third. A little exit velocity on that one. Mendlinger had to hang on for dear life. So we go to the fifth. It's 6 nothing. Six nothing Puerto Rico we go to the fifth inning no hits and for Israel no base runners through four innings what a dominant performance for Jose De Leon and he put together his appearance in the last World Baseball Classic I know that was six years ago but still on a big stage pressure moments yeah. that's six and two thirds innings three hits no runs he's he's thrived here. That's been a dandy has been fantastic to watch stress free. Ball one to Danny Valencia. We'll see if Israel can maybe at least get De Leon out of the windup, get him in the stretch, change something. Inside, Tuno. Problem for Israel is they came from behind yesterday, got their first win in their first World Baseball Classic game this time around. But they were only down one nothing. Hard hit ground ball, the third. Rivera. Blows him out. The thing is, the beauty of him is, even when he falls behind, he's challenging guys, and you can tell still the fastball's got life because they're not really squaring it up. You know, and that tells you a lot right there of what what type of stuff he's got today, where you know, he kind of babied those two sliders, fell down two and zero, oh, and just challenged them, and not much you can do right there with that fastball. It's exactly the right way to pitch too. You get a six-run lead. Go after him. Alex Dickerson takes a strike. That's a good changeup right there. And you made the point earlier in this tournament that the aggressive strike throwing approach really pays off in this format. Yep. Where you have the pitch count limits, where you have a roster full of pitchers who are still trying to build up in the month of March. It just, it, it just helps everybody. You help yourself, you help your teammates. Especially with an off day coming up. Mm. High fastball and he struck him out. Man. I think this is the best we've seen in this tournament so far. I mean, I, I know it's it's been a dandy right now, but he's got full control, and I know Lopez and Sandy and you know, Chris Garcia from Venezuela, they they they've pitched very well in this tournament, but watching De Leon right now, I mean it's it's as good as it gets. And the early offense, three in the first, three in the second for Puerto Rico, more than enough right now. LaVarnway swings at the first pitch. Down the right field line, long run, and he'll get there. Velasquez with the catch. That's a seven pitch inning. Jose De Leon. Man, what a performance tonight. He may not be done. We've had some really cool stories in the World Baseball Classic already, but in Arizona today, one of the best, I think. The first World Baseball Classic win for Great Britain. And they did it against Columbia, a team with an established baseball history, a lot of talent on that roster. Very impressive, an historic win for Great Britain. And they won seven to five that game, but this that win was so important also for the for the US team. Is that correct? It did help Team USA. Now that doesn't mean that the U.S. is absolutely going to go into no. the next round because they've already lost to Mexico. Right. But they got to outwin. It does sort of clarify things. If Correct. if the United States team just wins out now, they should be fine. Should be fine. Baez, the hitter here for Puerto Rico. 
they got the young kid Harry Ford who's a prospect for the Mariners He's just 20 years old people are already calling him like there's your face of baseball in yeah. Great Britain catcher backstop ML prospect MLB is going back over to London again this summer for another series of games yeah, a day like today can help spark some Absolutely. extra interest see where it goes. Baez liner left field base hit. Now, Javi Baez has his second oh, hit. He's going. And he's going to try for second. The throw, the tag. Oh, oh. Too late. Oh, oh. Did not need the swim move there, but why not? Why not? Running hard out of the box. Gets a breaking ball, stays through it. I just love seeing him run. And I know that was a beautiful swing, but seeing him run, smelling that base hit. Look at him, he's smelling it. He takes a peek. Oh, he's going. Wow. Wow. I mean, talk about Horowitz. He did everything perfect right there. Baez did it a little better. Yeah. Javi <laughs> Baez, big night for him. One thing about Javi, his hot streaks are oh, about as yeah. hot as anybody's. You are 100%. Look at that smile. Oh, yeah, he's going. <laughs> Messing around with first base coach, one of the Molina brothers. Jose. Fifth, Jose. fifth extra base hit for Puerto Rico tonight. Eight hits total. Dang, I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. What do you want me to do? There's Yachty. Jose and Yachty in their own way great players. Neither could run like Javi Baez. Oh no. <laughs> Javi's like I'll decide wh wh how far and fast I can run. Yeah, absolutely. Rosario trying to add to this lead. Change up misses for a ball. He just looks dangerous. He does. There's an aura in him at the plate. He kind of looks angry. I think he looks like he's an angry hitter in a good way. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, I'm saying that as a compliment. Yeah. He just looks hitterish. You know, there, there's guys that really. Feel their place at the box, and then there's guys that just just own their place at the box. He's behind one, two. On the ground to first. That'll be the first out here in the fifth. On the play, Baez goes to third. See, we were talking about Great Britain's historic win. Mexico with their. I mean, I, I think it's fair to say they thrashed USA last night. Yeah. So that that's turning into a wild pool of teams. Did we expect that? I mean, you know, I know US has Canada tonight, but that that's a challenge in itself. That's it kind is. of another trap game. You got to be very careful with Canada. Boy, the Canadian team scored 18 runs yesterday. Yes. Freddie Freeman in the middle of the lineup, some other good hitters. And a whole lot more pressure today on Team USA than yesterday. After what happened. 63 pitches here for Gold, so he's hung in there for a while. This is almost certainly now going to be his final hitter they have the infield in plus the shift on for Nelson Velasquez trying to have a chance on a ball on the ground for a play at the plate one and two a lot of times we see those shifts and, and two things come to mind they're either going to pound you in with two seamers or they're going to make you come off the end of the bat with the, with sliders whether well, or not they're not going to really if they show you a fastball away it's just for show they don't really want to strike you out with it. They want to come in and throw you sliders off of it. 
Fastball high. You see those shifts a lot of the times. You, you, you tend to have a plan. Look at the scoreboard, six nothing. You need to strike out here with one out, or he needs something on the ground to be hit to the shift. That's how you kind of, as a hitter, realize, okay, this is how they're going to attack me here. Two two is low. And you have those pitch limit rules, and he's now gone over 65. But you are allowed to yes. finish the hitter that you're facing. So Joey Wagman coming out for Team Israel. He can finish off this batter and then he'll have to come out of the game by rule. Those pitch limits go up as the tournament moves on. But in the first round 65 is the number. Got it with a change up so his final pitch was a good one and a strikeout to end his night. Pitching change for Ian Kinsler and Team Israel 6 0 Puerto Rico leads. Great Britain was a great story. We had an amazing story, you and I, earlier this afternoon. This young 21 year old right hander, Duque Ebert, for Nicaragua, who had never pitched outside of Nicaragua professionally, has never been a part of affiliated professional baseball. And he had this unbelievable outing today. He faced Soto, Rodriguez, Machado, and then Devers. He struck out three, didn't give up a run, took pictures after the game, had the ball, hugs and high fives in the dugout. And then what happened like an hour after the game? Truly, this is a true story. There's a Tiger scout here named Luis Molina, and he found Duque and signed him to a professional contract. He is now a part of the Tigers organization. Can you imagine what a story a life changing day for a kid who looks like he's about 15 years yeah. old and that smile I mean he was he was hugging and obviously his all his teammates were super excited for him but taking pictures in the dugout afterwards and everybody was just telling him do you know what you just did I, he, he had never pitched in the World Baseball Classic he had only pitched as a professional in his home country in the Nicaraguan Winter League. He was the rookie of the year there this last season. And today he struck out Juan Soto. Wow. He struck out Julio Rodriguez. He struck out Rafael Devers and signed his first professional contract in America. World oh. Baseball Classics. That's it. That's it right there. I mean if, if, if you know you can get excited about the fans you can get excited about the tournament itself but it, there's a chance. Where there are still teams taking a look at you and scouting and giving a guy an opportunity in moments like this. A dream come true. Joey Wagman comes in to pitch and immediately the pinch hitter, Vimael Machin, is issued an intentional walk. So Israel just desperately down six nothing and they haven't had a base runner on offense trying to hold the line here. So they like the matchup better with. The ninth place hitter Maldonado. Yeah, Joey Wagner's second World Baseball Classic appearance to making one appearance in the 2017 World Baseball Classic. Team Israel against the Netherlands. One inning pitch, one hit, one run. So two down, two on. Here in the bottom of the fifth. Maldonado oh! takes a strike. Good spider right there. World Baseball Classic showcase the great stars of the game. Let them play for their home country, the passion of the fans, and grow the game around the world. That's what it's supposed to be about. Then you get stories like Duque. Exactly. And Team Great Britain with their first win in their World Baseball Classic journey. Wow. And that's that's just a great remarkable day for the sport. One one pitch in the dirt. The Great Britain manager today, Drew Spencer, after the game said this. I know we have two outs, but I'll try to get it in. This is the beginning of chapter two for Great Britain baseball and British baseball in general. And I think there will be people who can use this moment as inspiration to come out and play the game and to believe that someone with this name on the front of their chest can be successful. Wow. Not much more to say after that. But anyway, cool that's day. Cool. That's pretty cool right there. In this event.
And you got to meet Daddy Yankee. Well, you've met him before, <laughs> but you get to hang with him. Yeah, I like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's been a good day. That was a highlight for you. Oh, yeah. 2 2. Bounce that one. Pop right there. Really good block. Mm -hmm. Ryan Lavardway, who in a lot of ways he's kind of become the face of Israel baseball on the national level. He's been a star in the Olympics, was a great player for them in the World Baseball Classic in 2017, where they won four games with a surprise team of that tournament. I think that has sort of catapulted them that that performance six years ago to where they are now. Well, he's about to see another slider in Maldonado. And he took it for a ball. So after the intentional walk, that is a mistake for Wagman. Now you got the bases loaded and you got to face Francisco Lindor. Yeah. He was counting on Maldonado chasing and he just Absolutely. wouldn't do it. Not a hard thrower so far. What we've seen from Wagman. A lot of cutters and curveballs. You're Lindor right now. You just want to get a strike. Get a strike. You go on. Because the guy they wanted to get out was Maldonado, and he, he ended up walking. So, you want to make sure you get a good pitch to hit right here. I mean, there's no problem ambushing somebody, but if you, if you don't have that much history on, you can time him up and, and, and take this at bat a little deeper. Strike one. Like cutter right there. Right. So you saw the first one. All right, now you can go off of that. You know you're going to see a lot of cutters. That's his his main pitch. His secondary is more of that curveball. So you time it up. How you hit that timer on the cutter is it's got to start in a window for you to go on. That's out. That's out. Oh, and two. That one right there. Still a good cutter, but kind of started a little bit more on the reach, so he can extend his arms a little bit more. Kind of sped him up a little bit. You can see that that chase curveball, or you can just live and die with your best stuff. That cutter in. The door, high drive, right center field. Peterson tracking it is off the wall, and Jock Peterson collides with the wall. That's going to clear the bases. Two are in, three are in, all the way to third. Lindor, a bases clearing triple. El capitán. The leader. Look at him go. Look at him enjoy it. And thankfully, Jack Peterson looks to be okay. I think you kind of sniffed that one out. You saw that coming. Yeah. We were wondering, is he going to triple up on that cutter? The yeah, bat took a little longer. He was trying to time him up. Sure enough, he got that hanging curveball. Oh. Lindor's just too much of a pro, man. That was a hanging curveball. Didn't try to do too much. Look how tight and extended he gets afterwards. He knows it. His extra bases. Luckily, Jock Peterson's okay. But once that ball hit the, hit the wall, everybody was running wild. Lavarway throws behind Lindor, and he picked him off. Oh. Wow. We forgive you. <laughs> That's what his teammates say. <laughs> Love it. After the bases clearing triple, it's now 9 nothing Puerto Rico. The offense for Puerto Rico has been outstanding, but the headliner, I think, is this guy, Jose De Leon. The longest perfect game bid by any team in World Baseball Classic history is right here, right now. Five perfect innings tonight for De Leon. He's still in the game, pitching into the sixth, which is hard to do with the pitch limits in the first round games. He misses outside ball one. The way he's pitched, he's, he's got a lot of wiggle room. Ten more pitches to go, but. Yeah, it's been stress-free. It's been effortless. He's made some really 
quality pitches when he's needed to. But it all starts with the fastball, Dave. Anytime you can locate your fastball, everything else falls into place. This is high there. Puerto Rico has shifted around its defense. Javi Baez has come out of the game. They already used a pinch hitter for Neftali Soto. Kike Hernandez has moved from the outfield to the infield. So you got Kike at second. Lindor stays in the game, at least for now. Velasquez in center. Henry Ramos has taken over in right field. And Vimayo Machin is now at first base. Spencer Horwitz had a huge hit for Israel yesterday, coming from behind against Jonathan Loisaga. And this counts as a good at bat by the standards of tonight. He's got the count full three and two. There we go. Velasquez in center, Ramos in right, Hernandez at second, Machine at first. Hey. Strike three call. Hey. Another strikeout for De Leon. He's got nine of those. That's a little four seam surprise cut. Comebacker. Aldenado knows it. Little frame drop right there. Horowitz definitely knew it. So approaching that pitch limit. We'll see if he can get through Ty Kelly quickly and maybe have a chance to finish off this sixth inning. No, I, I, I would. I know this sounds crazy, but I would just after two outs take him out. Let, let this crowd give him the ovation that he needs. That sounds crazy to me. I know, but you know. <laughs> Let him finish. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I would just love to see the crowd reaction. You know, that's that's just coming from a. This is the fan now talking, not the player. Foul ball. So now, 63 pitches. If he wants a chance to have one more hitter, he's got to get Ty right Kelly now. on this one. Has to be on this pitch. 65 or above, you can finish the at bat. Correct. If you get to 65 mid at bat. 1 2. Hey. Got it. Woo. All right, you were right. I can't wait to see this ovation right here. It's going to be a good one. He's earned it. Performance. Keep the ball. I'm telling you, you keep that ball now. Jose De Leon. Never gave up a base runner. Pitching change, Puerto Rico in control, 9 nothing. An all-time great World Baseball Classic performance tonight from Jose De Leon. The deepest perfect game in the history of this tournament. <laughs> he is a proud young man. 64 pitches, five and two-thirds, ten strikeouts. Against a team from Israel that has some good accomplished hitters in the lineup, a lot of them. Noah Menlinger will face Outside. the new pitcher. And that's Yaxel Rios. We saw him a couple days ago throwing the ball well, very hard throwing right hander. That's been last season in AAA with the White Sox. Went 4 and 3 with a 4 9 1 ERA. 33 innings pitched, though, 38 punches. This is a guy who's got. A lot of velocity like we're seeing right there, 97 to 100. Jose De Leon with the pitch limits, it's so hard to go deep into a game in these first round games. He matches Jeff Bartow, a pitcher from the Czech Republic, deepest start for anybody in this World Baseball Classic so far. But combine that with the fact that he had 10 strikeouts yeah. and never allowed anybody to reach first base. 
And you're looking at one of the great performances in the history of this event. I mean, you can tell he was on a mission from pitch one. As soon as he was on, you can just tell, oh boy, this is going to be a long night, Team Israel. Oh, my goodness. 98 and then 88 to totally flummox Medlinger. Another strikeout for the Puerto Rican pitchers. Jose De Leon's night tonight in Miami. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of World Baseball Classic Inc. May not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. From Miami, we got quite a story here. A perfect game being pitched by Puerto Rico. Nine nothing they lead. And a curveball. Since Kike Hernandez jumping back out of the way for ball one, bottom six. Puerto Rico, if they could get a run across here, would have a chance to end this game early. Kike's got one hit, an extra base hit, a double, a run batted in, and a run scored. Two and zero. Oh. Heads up. Troy Wagman, the third pitcher of the game. You have to lead by 15 to terminate a game early after five. But after seven innings, if you lead by 10, game over. It's 9 nothing right now. Oh. Two and one. Friendly. Very. 9 nothing. Friendly. He's a veteran back there. Dropped by LaVar and Way. It was outside anyway. Three and one. Moments like this, you wonder if Team Puerto Rico know that, right? I'm sure the coaches know, what the players know and are talking about it. That might be a little different, but you're right. I mean, and they have an off day tomorrow, so it's not urgent, but I think every team welcomes, hey, end of game. Absolutely. A couple innings early, you save some pitches from that staff. That's the key right there. Being able to save. Some pitches. I would still like to see Edwin Diaz. I think he still needs work. He hasn't pitched all tournament. I would like to see him get at least some work in. Huh? You want to see that, huh? So does Yadier Molina, maybe. Yeah. I think it's crucial for him. I mean, especially a a relief pitcher. You go three days without pitching. You know, there's so much. Side work you can do. There's so much, so many bullpens you can, you can do. But real game action is totally different. Well, you you figure they need him against the Dominican Republic on Wednesday night. Strike two to Melendez. That's a good cutter right there. Because it, it's it's lining up to be a game to move on. Essentially an elimination yeah. game. Edwin Diaz, I mean, I, by the numbers last year, he was the most dominant relief pitcher in the big leagues. He's, He's an incredible right. weapon for Puerto Rico, and you're going to use him in a game like that. He was automatic. Way. Automatic. Oh, my. So I think you're right, getting him a little work here tonight and then the off day tomorrow, that, that could be really important. His former teammate of mine in Seattle, he was a great teammate, hard worker. Pools for his guys. Just an absolute gamer. How Got better and better every year. How close was he then to this version of Edwin Diaz? A little bit more. It was wild, a little wild, but you know, he, he certainly has turned it around. But you can just see it. You can just see the action. You can oh, you can see how every year he got better. His slider got better. His velocity got better. The command got better. He started with fastball command and then. And it's then the next year was the slider command. So then he had fastball and slider command, and then it was just a matter of him putting it together. And my goodness, you know what I like most about him too? His first year in New York, it, it didn't go maybe as some people would have hoped. Smash up the middle, base hit for Melendez. Kike Hernandez goes to second, stops there. Linea pitch and duck.
finish my point though. After we show you this highlight yes. from the 2006 World Baseball Classic, Chiron Martis pitching for the Netherlands young pitcher facing Panama. It was a seven inning game, and it's the only no hitter still in the history of the World Baseball Classic. Huh. And we have a chance for one here tonight, not only because Israel doesn't have a hit yet, but because now Puerto Rico is threatening 9 nothing. They could be three outs away from ending this game if they can right. get another run across. Finish my point on Edwin though. When it started with it, you know, New York his first year, people didn't like how, how he kind of went about it his first year, but his second year though, he's been electric. He answered the bell. Did not let the pressure of oh. that town. And all the attention on him and the lack of success did not let that get to him. Oh no! If you get to know Edwin, you know he's he's a man of all men. He, he'll he'll stand up, he'll answer the bell and fight. Calm, cool, and collective. Inside. One ball, one strike to count to Emmanuel Rivera, who continues to throw out good at bats for Puerto Rico. It's a situation, right? Pick your poison. Try to come in on him. He's shown that he can take that ball inside the other way, as we saw that triple. The breaking ball is kind of the pitch, but don't hang it. On the ground, and that could be two. There's one. Gell off to first. Got him double play. Yeah. So on that play, Hernandez goes to third, but that's two outs on one pitch. Made a good pitch right there with that breaking ball. A little bit off the end of the bat. First at bat of the night here in Baez's spot. Henry Ramos came in for defense. They shuffled some things around, came into Baez's spot. So Henry Ramos off the bench. A chance to get that tenth run across here with a base hit. Good take right there, especially coming off the off the bench. It's tough. Last year in the KBO. Let me see that shift right there. Turn pound him in. He's been around a while. Henry Ramos. Ahead now, two balls, no strikes. 30 years old. His brother's a professional soccer player. He's got one brother who's a soccer player. He's got a younger brother who's been a big prospect in the Giants yeah. organization. Oh. Third ball for a strike. So a very athletic family. He's signed back. In the United States with the Cincinnati Reds in the offseason. So going to get another crack to get back to the big leagues. Yeah. He hits that one to right field. Alex Dickerson onto the warning track to make the catch. Oh, so close for Ramos, but no runs for Puerto Rico. Still a nine run lead. We go to the seventh. Back in Miami, second game of the night, day three in Pool D. Puerto Rico firmly in control of this game against Israel. In fact, Israel still has not had a base runner. Oh, and now they bring in Edwin Diaz. How about <laughs> so these you're trying to get uh, your first base runner against this guy. Some of the most unbelievable single season numbers in the history of the game. Yeah, let's just talk about the strikeouts to walk ratio. Wish they could put that back up. I mean, it's it is unbelievable. Talk we, about we the can Diaz put it back brothers. Up. Talk about the Diaz brothers, huh? Thanksgiving, how's that for you? Uh, you know, I had a good year for a rookie year. Oh well, yeah. I had a better year. My goodness, just incredible. Oh, 118 strikeouts, 18 walks, 62 innings, 18 walks. That's for, that for me is. 
the 118 to 18, because that's always been the knock on Edwin Diaz, is the ability to make maybe get a little erratic. Earlier on with the Seattle days, that's that's who he was, because it was four before three, four balls before three strikes. That, but boy, oh boy, he he's really 35 appearances, 32 saves. I mean, wow, 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 wow. The other changes Diaz in the game to pitch. John Eshri Farkas is now the center fielder. That sends Velasquez back to right field. Kike Hernandez has moved over to shortstop. That's a slider at 91 miles an hour right there. That one looks sharp. Likes to throw that sweeper off of it. Likes to go up the ladder. Let's see a fastball here. Oh, 2 100 miles an hour, strike three. Every strikeout for Edwin Diaz via Statcast from last year. You have pour them in there. <laughs> 30 of them on the fastball. 88 strikeouts for a reliever with one pitch, the slider last year. That was a fastball right there. Number one in the World Baseball Classic in 2023. Hard slider down and into Matt Mervis for ball one. And just to keep us on our toes, that we showed you all the changes. The second baseman for Puerto Rico is the other Edwin Diaz. Uh huh. But that's oh. not his brother, uh -huh. Alexis Diaz, who's still in the bullpen. Correct. There's two Diaz brothers on this team, and there's two Edwin Diaz's on this team. Wow. But those aren't the two brothers. Got it? I got it. 99. It's one and two. And there's no fooling around here. Just give him your best stuff. Mano, mano. Here you go, kid. Let's see if you can hit it. Here's 100. One, two. He did hit it softly to second. And the other Edwin Diaz catches it out of the air. Still perfect. Puerto Rico on the mound, seventh inning stretch time. Great city, and what a night for Team Puerto Rico. They have not allowed a base runner against Israel on the mound, and when they've been out there on defense, and now a chance to walk it off with a run. They lead 9-0. Vargas leading off, ground ball to short. Ty Kelly got it. Very close. Vargas is really fast. He's getting down that line pretty good. I, I think he is a hair, hair late. You gotta give it up. Yep. Got the call right. Wanna keep that ball, Daniel Fetterman. Pembroke Pine, Florida. Kid from South Florida. Yeah. UM guy, University of Miami, a hurricane. Pitching here in his hometown in the World Baseball Classic. It's got to be a treat oh. for him. Strike one to Nelson Velasquez. Missed with his breaking ball. It's one and one. He was named freshman All American. University of Miami in 2018 went 2 2 and 5, 60 innings. Fair ball along the third base line. And a good long throw. That's Mendlinger. Throws him out. Two down. So, do you have like the secret handshake, the, the U secret handshake or whatever? No. I mean, I, I, I went to UM in uh, 2008. And I, was, I was a dinosaur. It's a brotherhood, though, right? For life. They are for life, no question about it. Miami guy will always be a Miami guy, no matter where you're at. You can be, you can be on the other side of the world, and I know you went to the University of Miami, and somehow, some way, we're gonna have friends in common, and we're going out to dinner. That's the Miami crew for you. That's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Be my own machine. Doesn't matter if you went to Miami in 1985 or in 2023. Right there. I like his demeanor on the mound too. Works quick. 
You know it is interesting we're getting ready for the new pitch clock rules in big league baseball but almost all the young guys who have experienced those clock rules in the minor leagues almost all of them are really fast. Now they're just nature that's a good point right there. I mean most of the guys that we're seeing in the minor leagues play here at the World Baseball Classic. There's a tempo. And it's it's it, it looks like it's just worked to their advantage. I mean it's it's ripping and ripping. Give me the next pitch. I love what Fetterman's doing right now. He's still got the old Miami glove too with the orange labels on him. Maybe he broke it out special pitching in his hometown. And he oh, pitched beautiful. a really good inning. He's what a pumped moment. up about that. What a moment. What a moment. Gotta love it. South Florida, Miami here. A hurricane always a hurricane. Well, you and I, Yonder Alonso, Dave Fleming, will be back here tomorrow. Our next game from Miami, Nicaragua, and Venezuela at noon Eastern time in Pool D, second to last day of Pool D play. After tonight, we're more than halfway finished with the games in this pool. We won't be at the beach, we'll be at the ballpark. That's all right. Love Where to be here with this, be? right? Look at this place. Wayne Underwood Jr. takes over. Remember the Pirates organization. A solid year last year. Pitched a scoreless inning against Nicaragua in the first game for Puerto Rico. Try who was primarily four seam changeup. Kind of cut down his barrel rate in half. Started using more of that, that cutter, that curveball. 2022. And there's a little more pressure than a, a normal 9 nothing game would carry because his teammates have not allowed a base runner. <laughs> oh! So he wants to keep that going. Strike one to Danny Valencia. That two. cutter. It's that cutter we talk about right there. Was changed him. It's made him pretty special. That cutter, man. And I think that's that's kind of that new wave now. A lot of that sweeper slider, that cutter action type of pitch. A lot of times it was that four seam up with that change up or that curveball down. Now they've created that cutter. Ground ball. Rivera cuts in front of the shortstop and throws him out. See that cutter once again off the end of the bat. For Valencia with a broken one. 22 hitters in a row retired by Puerto Rican pitchers tonight. Alex Dickerson, 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Ouch. I mean it's late. It's it's sharp. Not fun. But the problem with that now is you can go different windows. You can go cutter in, change up off of it, two seamer off of it, backdoor cutter, and so many windows you can go with. You got that velocity. A little Mariano Rivera esque wind up. It's smooth, it's simple. It's explosive. That's the guy who did most of the work on the yeah. mound tonight. Jose De Leon, five and two thirds, perfect innings with ten strikeouts. His ten strikeouts, by the way, matches the all-time single-game World Baseball Classic record. Huh. Ubaldo Jimenez had ten strikeouts in a game. That's what I love about baseball. How pro Maldonado is. Nine nothing game, top of the eighth, buried down on a one-two. Once the slider. Tells Underwood, hey, I want this down. You got to trust me. I'm going to block it for you. Let's try it again. Almost hit him. That's Which, that life. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing you get that much movement, but there are times yes. where it can be hard to corral that. What a good problem to have. Too much movement.
to first. Two outs. Machine took it himself. Well, let's take a look at De Leon tonight. He was very exceptional. I understand that curveball slider combo he was working with, but I think for me it started with that fastball. The control of the fastball early on set up the changeup, set up the curveball, set up the cutter. He was special, and all of Puerto Rico, the island of Puerto Rico, knows how special he was. They were thrilled and proud. So we see his strikeouts, his 10 strikeouts, a changeup, that sinker, that curveball off of it. Him and Maldonado really synced up early on, and boy, it was a beauty to watch. First pitch swing, Ryan Lavardway, a pop up on the infield. Machin makes the call and the catch. Eight perfect innings on the mound for Puerto Rico tonight. We go to the last half, 9 0. They're still here, hoping for some history in the World Baseball Classic. Fans, young and old, from Puerto Rico. What a night. And a chance once again to walk it off. Which is weird when you're up by nine runs. Jack Weinberger will take over on the mound for Israel. He is the fifth pitcher of the game for Ian Kinsler's team. Early on, Puerto Rico explosive offensively. Since then, the, the relievers have mostly done a pretty solid job. Yeah. But it, it just hasn't mattered because. Israel's offense has not had a base runner tonight through eight innings. Unreal. And Martin Maldonado, who has caught two combined no hitters in his big league career, including one last summer with the Astros, could be a part of something even tougher to accomplish. Ball one to Maldonado. Talk about Jack Weinberg. He was added to the roster on February 27. About getting that call. Hey, you want to come hang out? World Baseball Classic in South Florida? Yeah, why not? We weren't on the call, but we can imagine what his answer was. Yeah. Uh, yes, oh! yes, I would like to. Let's go. Tell me when and where. Side corner. It's a good pitch right there. Sinking at the knees. Funky delivery, little three quarter action. You're going to have a lot of movement, especially for the right handers with that two seamer. Now a little slider spin off of it after that. Just like that. Tough night for Israel. They'll have their hands full again tomorrow night. It'll be Israel and the Dominican Republic, the second game tomorrow yeah. here in Miami. Out. You know this place, man. It's a nine-nothing game, but nobody's left their seat. I know. Everybody's enjoying their time. Well, the Puerto Rican team gets tomorrow off. They don't play tomorrow. Do the fans sort of take the day off themselves, rest up, get ready for? Wednesday night. <laughs> no. Maldonado takes the walk. You know, I, I have a feeling Wednesday night's gonna feel like a, a definitely a, a World Series Game Seven type of type of game. I believe that is true. You will not want to miss our game on Wednesday night I mean, unless something crazy happens tomorrow. I mean, no, it, just, it, and I think it, it does. You know, for us, I think we're we're looking, you know, so ahead of it, kind of seeing the schedule and the way it's turning out to be. But how can you not, right? It's it's not fair, but to the other teams. But how can you just not yeah. do that? And I I I, uh, I give this Puerto Rico team some credit tonight for not looking ahead. I, I thought Absolutely. that was a, you called it a trap game. I thought that was a, the right term. Like there was a chance that already circling that game on Wednesday against. The Dominican would 
cause him to take some focus away from tonight. That has obviously not happened. Edwin Diaz. Ouch. Yeah. Tough way to get to first base. But now the game ending run is in scoring position. Look at Ian's Kinsler. Not much you can do on the bench right there. No. It's been a tough night. Kike Hernandez. Base hit doesn't automatically end the game because you got Maldonado as the runner at second base, but a run ends the game and that would finish off a perfect game. That's right. You could have an eighth inning walk off perfect game here tonight if Puerto Rico can get a run across. I think the fans are feeling it. I think they know what's happening. We had this scenario in the sixth inning, two on nobody out in a double play. Cost Puerto Rico the chance to end it there. Another opportunity now. <laughs> you, ball one. You are right. The, the, the fans. Everybody is still here. And all the fans, at least on the Puerto Rican side, their dugout. They're all standing up. They're all kind of feeling the moment, understanding the moment as well. Yeah, they know. The, the party which has been going on in the stands is about to explode again. That one is lined into left field base hit. Maldonado and they're going to send him. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. The relay is late. And the game is over. Now they knew. A walk off. Perfect game. World Baseball Classic win. How cool is that? The Look first that. one in the history of the World Baseball Classic tonight. How cool is that? From start to finish, from pitching, from defense, from hitting, they came to play. Team Puerto Rico. Showing off not only to the fans here at Lone Depot Park, but to the world. They got a lot of fight in this tournament. Tough night last night. You lose to one of your rival countries, Venezuela. You come back tonight against a solid team and just utterly dominated Jose De Leon was the star Kike Hernandez found a way to end it Martin Maldonado was digging deep oh, he was digging you got to dig <laughs> he's watching oh yeah perfect game he's still got that ball he's got a pen you're under it and he's got a smile that might not go away for a long time. <laughs> How cool is that? Is he signing, inscribing that ball? A souvenir forever in Puerto Rico. A moment that he'll never forget. 24 hitters, 24 outs, 12 strikeouts. De Leon, Yaxel Rios, Edwin Diaz, and then Dwayne Underwood. They combine for the first perfect game in World Baseball Classic history. Oh, what a smile, what a moment. Team Puerto Rico. This is unbelievable. Ten runs, 12 hits. One day at a time, but. Could have been a trap game. It's not. I think moving forward now, they can kind of see the light. They can get ready. An off day tomorrow. I would say no practice after doing that. They don't need practice. Practice. <laughs> it's just practice. Get ready for Wednesday. It's going to be a showdown. Yeah, it kind of sets up perfectly now. After last night, the bounce back today, the off day tomorrow, set up your pitching, get everything lined up. For what could be an all-time classic. So pool D 
were coming into focus. History tonight, a perfect game for the first time in this tournament's history. Tomorrow we got more baseball for you, 12 Eastern, Nicaragua and Venezuela. For Yonder Alonso, for our whole crew, for Daddy Yankee, Dave Fleming saying goodnight from Miami. Thanks for watching this presentation of the World Baseball Classic.